everybody was in the sanctuary for revival. I go to churches nowadays, uh, hey man, on Wednesday nights, I promise you, and in some places I do revivals, uh, there's only a few adults sitting in there. All the young people are in the back rooms. They dismiss them after the song service. The last church I was at that did that, I said, God, I felt my spirit. That's why we're going to do it. I felt like it was God showing me, and it was. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, when they go to do it, stop it. Like, Lord, they won't ever get me to go back. God said, he ain't never stopped you before. <laughs> you knew that in some places you wouldn't go, never go back to when you preach. And I'm, man, when the pastor's reading the newspaper while you're preaching, you probably know you're not going back. <laughs> when he threatens you before the service, you know you're probably not going back and come because you defy what he threatens you with. You're going to obey God rather than a man. Amen. I mean, you kind of know you know. But that pastor got up. He done turned it over to me now. If he had to turn the mic over to me, I wouldn't have did it. That's the only way I did it because he done gave me the authority. He done released me. And he had forgot. I thought, man, I miss God then. I kept hearing all, you know, from Sunday up till Tuesday. They're going to do that because I missed it. They're going to do it. I know this youth pastor going to get it and they're going to take them all out of here. I could have been seeing God said, you're going to stop it. And I'm thinking, boy, I miss God. Amen. Because the pastor done turned it over to me. They gave me the mic, and I was about, I was about to stop. I already quoted the scripture to him, was beginning. And he said, oh, Brother Marvin, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, he, he said, he called the youth pastor and said, Oh, we got to dismiss the youth and the drought. And they all went to getting up. And I said, No, due respect, Pastor. I said, I got a word from the Lord. All the young people stays in the service tonight. Amen. God moved and touched them young people that night. Amen. Come on, somebody. Listen. The move of the Holy Ghost yes. uh, in a person's life, regardless of their age. Uh, nothing, uh, amen, will never be able to take the place, uh, amen, glory to God, uh, but the glory waves of the Spirit of God uh, moving in their heart and on their bodies. Come on. Yes. I remember when I was 19, uh, and I'm in a youth service at an assembly of God where the youth pastor was my friend. He pastors out in Texas now. Hallelujah. And, and uh, the older people were waiting in the congregation on Wednesday night. Lights was off in the church. They was all standing around outside waiting for all the young people to get out so they could go home. But all the young people, hallelujah, about 50 of them was laid out. Every one on the floor. They were rolling. Holy rolling. You're, you know, I've been since you didn't see me. Come on, let's notice I'd be, I'd be, I'd be a holy roller than a hand folder. Come on, son. Just holy roll. I want them holy roll. I rolled everywhere. Through the God rolled up on her tables. I rolled up on her table and God gave me a vision of my future and my ministry. Come on, I'm walking in some of it right now. And I was 19 and I'm 41 now. Come on, son. There'll never nothing take the place of that. Nothing. Nothing. I can remember when I was 13 at an open air, glory to God, tabernacle meeting. Praise God. And I didn't hear nothing the preacher was saying. All I was there for is to cut up and have fun. Look at the girls. <laughs> come on. Hey man, don't look at me like I'm doing. You know you used to do it too. Hey man, I didn't care nothing about no God. Hallelujah. Hey man, I was just there to have fun, swim, and chase the girls. Praise God. Hey man, that's something to say for today because there's a lot of folks ain't chasing the girl. The man, they're chasing the men. Come on. Yeah, God. Right. God. <laughs> when Adam woke up out of his deep sleep and saw Eve, not Steve, he said, well, <laughs> He didn't say man. If he did, none of us would have been here. Come on, somebody. But anyhow, and, and so I was sitting on the very back, way back at the back. Hallelujah. Hey, man, we was cutting up, and I wouldn't hear nothing that was going on up front. And all of a sudden, I felt a hand touch me on my right shoulder, and I felt a tingling feeling go through my body. And I felt cold and hot at the same time. I don't even know how to explain it. And I remember being afraid to even turn or look. I quit talking. I quit moving. I quit doing anything. I, and, and then finally, I worked up enough of nerve to turn around. And I noticed my friend sitting beside me who was really rowdy. He wasn't rowdy. He was sitting there and he was looking like he was scared or something. Looked at him and said, man, what's wrong with you? He said, man, what no the And we sit like that just, uh, didn't nobody had to tell us to be still doing it. <laughs> we was walking back to our cabins, 13. I looked at him and he looked at me. He said, man, you know what happened to me tonight? I said, well, he said, I felt a hand touch me. And when I got up enough oh, nerve to turn around and look, there wasn't nobody there. I said, you too? 
Hallelujah. Uh, can nobody take them on? That's right. That, that's that's what orders in life. Yes. Come on, somebody. The touch of the Holy Ghost. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. You, you've made strong. Amen. For yourself. Psalms 80, verse 17. Somebody say, let your hand be. Not let your hand was. I thank God for last year's touch and last month and last Sunday. But there's a today's touch. And I'm afraid that the modern church has lost their hunger for today's touch. So what? You a Zara? Old red ribbon religion tied around your wrist? Gonna stay in your little comfortable womb room? Or are you gonna be like Perez? You gonna break out? Somebody say break out. Break out. Break out. Break out. Break out. Bring crazy break out. notes up here on their music. I'm gonna close with this. I promise you today he called me to preach over close to 24 years ago now. I uh, <laughs> I was so shy up until that day, uh, and still am to a certain point until the mic gets in my hand. <laughs> huh? I uh, I uh, I mean, I don't care on a conversation with nobody. They'd be talking to me for a while before I actually they got a word or sense. <laughs> mm? I had long hair. We down, I guess, right? I'm not kidding. I'm talking about hair. I look like a toothpick with hair. <laughs> skin and bones and all that hair. You know? I play my drums for a living and I sling it. I remember it hit cymbals when I do that. I hit cymbals with my hair. I travel up down the road and meet famous people. I thought I was something. There's a toothpick with hair pants so tight it'd take John's life to get him off. <laughs> Couldn't wear them on the outside of my boots, it wouldn't fit. They'd go right down on the inside. Conchos on my boots, boy, was Mr. Cool Breeze, looked like Leonard Skinner. Huh? Man, I was real shy. I'd, I'd hang my head like that sometimes, my hair would just cover my face. I didn't want to talk to him. Huh? But then when I got drumsticks in my hands, I'd show out. It's a whole different person. And likewise today, it's still the same way when I get behind the drums and start singing prophetically and God stops using us. Amen. With my praise team like we do back home. Amen. Or up under my tent. And, and, uh, or when this mic gets in my hand. This, this is a whole different, another world. Hallelujah. But I remember tonight God touched me. Mm. Tonight I had a face-to-face -face encounter of a God guy. Amen. I'll never forget. When I got up off the floor, and I never saw anybody fall on the floor, I was raised in a little dead Methodist church. Amen. Ain't no other way to say it. If you're watching online, you went there, ain't it? <laughs> Amen. It was dead. Still is. <laughs> still going there, you watch it? Still is. <laughs> I can't even. And. I had never seen the move of God. You just keep recording too. Don't stop it right yet. But, but I, I was, you know, I, I never knew anything about speaking with other tongues or falling out in the Holy Ghost or, you know, running. And all I ever knew in church was go and you fought down and for about an hour. You heard the preacher talk about stuff. And that's all he did was just talk. He stayed right here. And he talked. And he talked. Most everybody in the church, and by the way, y'all need to get that clock off that wall back there. Go ahead and take it down, brother. Take that down right. Amen. Praise God. I like that clock. Can I have it? Amen. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, now you can put it back up if you want to after I leave, but I don't want it back up where I'm and, 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 and it's what the people would do while the preacher talked. I mean, time he started. <laughs> you ever seen somebody like that's addicted to that stuff? Every few minutes. Every few seconds. Especially in church. I remember one time sitting there and I got to watch a people. And 
that's a trip. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. They weren't no more interested in God. It was just a little religious that's thing they were going through. Yeah. Yeah. I got you on the clock. Clock hit at 11. Be through by 12. The football game coming on and the chicken gonna resurrect down out of the oven if you look the rest of the night. me, I'd never seen nothing. I mean, that's all I've seen, son. 11 a.m., 12 p.m., it's over. <laughs> Out the door. Everybody living the same way I was. Didn't see. <coughs> that night, God touched me. I'd done been saved a little while. He touched me that night, and I remember I could not stand. I hit the ground. Oh, glory. I hit the ground, and I couldn't get up. There was such a heaviness that come on me. I would try to lift up my head and I could not get up. I felt a hand touching me. I felt like liquid oil and fire all over my body. I, I, you know, I don't care what you think. I experienced it and I'm not trying to get your approval of it, but I'm going to tell it anyhow. Hey Amen. The very next day, my tears were so hot they come out of my eyes. My face, the skin peeled perfect uh, marks where the tears went. They were so hot, it burnt my skin and it was peeling the next day. I mean, it felt like the whole place just was just ecstatic with a person. That night I knew him as a person and I've known him as a person ever since. He was not some church service all my life growing up. That's all he was, was mama's God. Uh, oh, and the preacher's God. Uh, and a church service on Sunday. Uh, and all the Bible was, was a bunch of religious stories that people read out of and songs they sang about. Uh, oh, but that night I encountered a person. Job 13 and 8 said, will you receive his person? I realized that night Jesus was not just a something. He was a someone. The Holy Ghost was not some feeling or force. He was my best friend. Glory to God. Amen. And God began to deal with me. Hours went by. And I could not get up. I was in a different world. I didn't want to get up. To be honest with you, for a while there, it was just glory to God. It's like I left this earth. Hallelujah. When I got up, my voice had changed. I looked at my mom on the next day and I said, God called me to preach. I went to church, that dead little church, went telling everybody, God called me to preach and some of them. Because <laughs> God actually talking to somebody was kind of. <laughs> some of them still think that way about me. And some of them are kin folk. You know? Some of them same people went to that church and my kinfolk go listen to me playing the honky tonks and at the bar singing about getting drunk and, and come on somebody. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. But after they heard me to preach the first time, <laughs> they ain't been where I've been since. I experienced a living God. Yes. I got up and I was telling people I was called to preach. I'm the pastor. Our guest got so tired of hearing me say I was called to preach. He said, I ain't going to be here this Sunday. Uh, you fill in. First time I preached, filled in. Oh, first time I preached over an hour. Somebody's thinking, boy, you've grown a lot. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But I was changed. See, first Samuel 10, 6 said, The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you. You'll prophesy with them and be turned into another man. You've not been in the presence of the Holy Ghost huh, until you've been changed. He changes you. If you just have a little religious meetings, come on. It's, it's a shame today. Modernly, we got the sense of the meeting, but we've lost the mind of the Spirit. Huh, because you get in the mind of the Spirit again, you'll be changed. He'll change you from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Amen A couple nights later I was still so addicted Want more God, want more God Couldn't get enough, I didn't even know what I was going after so I've never heard anybody preach like this I've seen demons manifest And so I was trying to find scriptures that talk about it Because the preacher where I went never preached about it You know it's kind of modern Christian You get so far away from God Amen, you shrink the devil Amen Hello Come on 
That's why we got Pentecostals, amen, that don't even believe in spiritual warfare no more. They don't even have no understanding and knowledge of the fight that goes on in the spirit and what they're dealing with. They're fighting each other. Come on, somebody. They think they're fighting personalities, but it's principalities. That Ephesians 6 12 says, you heard the old ladies movie, honey, we shrunk the kids. Well, the modern church could say, honey, we shrunk the devil. Because the further you get away from God, amen, the more you get away from the reality of a real devil. But the closer I got to God, I found out, the more I was seeing devils manifest and didn't know one day God's going to be using me to cast them out of people. Amen. Man, this stuff going on, I'm talking about y'all. And some people I talk to and they think, my God, that sounds like something out of Hollywood, something out of horror films, something out of Where do you think they're getting their material from? Yeah. 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 Demons. That's right. Devils. Man, when you walk into a room and you're 19 years of age, and Mama, who's a beautician, been one all her life, she just retired last year. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And she gets to cut your hair. She's rejoicing because for since 13 to 19, you had long hair. Mama's always just thought about it. I wish I could. <laughs> and Mama wakes me up one night and comes and says, Son, what something's going on in here? This stuff started happening in our house after I got after God, after I started pursuing God, strange things were going on in the house. Yes. My little Methodist mama loved Jesus, prayed me into the kingdom, had to know nothing about the power of God either. She ran in there one night, she said, son, please come into my room. I said, why, mama? Amen. She said, yeah, I know you've been seeing, you've been seeing stuff, and stuff been going on. She said, I've been learning a lot from you, and I've been serving God just about all my life, but I'm learning stuff from you, and you ain't been saved but a few months. Come on, this after God called me, and I ain't never heard of in my life. And how she said, son, come in my room, something's going on. When I walked in the room, I remember them days, I was 19, and I had a, I wore two necklaces, one with a heart that said, I love Jesus. Jesus and other with a cross with Jesus on it. And when I stepped into the room, the temperature changed and both my necklaces, uh, without anybody seeing in front of me, stood out in front of my face. And dropped back down on my chest. What you do? My flesh won't say, Bubba Jack, see you later. <laughs> I thought that was just from Hollywood. They're getting their material from real demons. Yes, amen. Come on, church. Come on, preach it, man. What you do? The Bible I've been reading and, and devouring because I couldn't eat in those days. There was something wrong with me. Doctors couldn't figure it out, and God healed me years later. Glory to God, but I couldn't swallow food. Matter of fact, God's going to heal somebody tonight before I get through. You have trouble swallowing certain types of food, not after tonight, said the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you'll be healed. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but I couldn't swallow, and I was dried up. You can count my ribs. I promise. My shirt off, you count all my ribs. That's how skinny I was. I mean, I was just drying up to nothing. Praise the Lord God. Amen. And so I couldn't eat, but I found out Matthew 4 and 4 said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I began to eat the Bible. That's why I quote scripture. I don't quote the scripture to entertain somebody or show off. Amen. It literally kept me alive. I started before I ever preached. I was, amen, Lord of God, devouring, eating in mom of the beautician. Amen. She let the beauty of the Lord God be in her. Amen. Beauty shop. She put scriptures up everywhere. I'm going to put scriptures where everybody's going to read that don't even like to read. You know, the Oval Office, the porcelain throne. When you went to the porcelain throne, God took you to God. But God, Mama took you to God's throne. She had scripture up all over the walls, everywhere, literature everywhere. There were no fishing magazines. There was stuff on hell and heaven and getting right with God. Come on, somebody. Amen. And what the word of God said. Amen. And amen. I try to eat my big pancake in the morning before I went to school. Mama threw down a big Bible, highlighted bold letters. Glory to God. Every morning there were passages to read. After I'd done read everything on all the cereal boxes and everything else, I'd find while I'm still eating, I'd read what Mama put there. Mama put them up on the mirrors. I, I couldn't do my long hair and take my eye to do in the morning to get it all just right. Oh, uh, without having to do this, because uh, scriptures was all over the mirror. I was quoting the Bible before I got saved. Uh, glory to God. Uh, I'd go get bologna out of the bottom of the refrigerator. Amen. Glory to God. The drawer there. Amen. When I picked the bologna up, I'd been set up. There's the scriptures take. I'm talking about the cold heart truth. I went for a cold cut and I got cut with the cold heart truth. Come on, somebody right up under the bologna. Amen. <laughs> When I couldn't eat, I started eating the Bible. Amen. I make sure I eat it every day. Since then, eat the Bible, eat the Bible, eat the Word, eat the Word, eat the Word. And when I walked in that room where them devils was at, and them naked stood up and dropped back down, and my flesh wanted to run out, something rose up in me. Glory to God. His name was the Holy Ghost. I walked to the foot of Mama's bed, and I said, turn the light off. I said, because you can't show devils, you're afraid. Ah, God ain't gave me a spirit of fear, but a power living sound mind, second Timothy 1 said, I knelt down at the foot of that bed, and I started quoting the Bible and praying, and when I started quoting the Bible and praying, 35 minutes later, Mama was laid out on the floor who had 
never fell on the floor. Hallelujah. And when I got through and mom was getting up with tears running down her face, I was soaked down in sweat. Glory to God, my voice. Amen. It was like I was preaching the way you hear me right now. That's the way I sounded then. Amen. Because the first message I ever preached was to the devil. Still preaching on the devils. Every time I preach, I'm preaching to a devil. You may have brought him with you, but I'm preaching to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And mama began to weep. She said, son, you were preaching. You were preaching. You were preaching. I want you to know when I got up off of my knees, there wasn't no demons in that house. There wasn't no devil in that room. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Evil had been evicted by the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't take those times from me. I don't care if you don't like the way I preach or like the way I deliver it. And God wasn't in what I was doing. And God wasn't this. I sent reports back. I said, well, go tell them somebody better inform God. Because he keeps showing up. And he keeps saving souls. And he keeps casting the devil out. And healing the sick. Somebody shout. There's more to this God than we know. I'm really Pentecostal. <laughs> and I need at least 10 more minutes. Second huh? Kings chapter 4, 1 through 6. There was a woman whose husband had died. They didn't have life insurance policies back then. And her husband had a great debt to pay. And in those days, the creditor to pay off the debt become the head adult sons. Put the sons in the hard labor camps, prison, to work off their daddy's debt. Mama was concerned about it. Any mama would. So mama cries out to God, and God leads her to the prophet of God, Elisha. He said, go borrow you some empty vessels, not a few. Go borrow as many empty ones as you can get. Because God only does miracles with emptiness. He will only feel where it's empty. And there's an enemy in the modern church, and I call it the enemy of enough. When you get to the state where you've got enough of God, and you desire no more, that's as much of God you'll ever see. 